President Trump says he wants to require all voters to show a photo ID when they go to the polls. The president was in Tampa, Florida last night for a rally ahead of the state's primary this month. Mr. Trump pushed for voter ID by making an erroneous comparison with grocery shopping. You know, if you go out and you want to buy groceries, you need a picture on a card. You need ID. You go out and you want to buy anything. You need ID and you need your picture. A photo ID is only required for buying certain items, such as alcohol, cigarettes, and certain medications. With more on the president's remarks, we want to bring in CBS News White House correspondent Weijia Jiang. Hi, Weijia. You know, critics argue voter ID laws disproportionately affect minorities and poorer populations. Is that a concern for the president, or is all of this just playing to his base? Well, that is not a concern. That is a concern that critics have uh, when the president continues to bring up this issue, which is not new for him. In fact, he adopted this line of attack on the campaign trail, and he claimed that three to five million people voted illegally in the 2016 election, and he made those claims without any evidence and to this day has yet to provide it. But critics say, in fact, when you look at different studies that have been made, in fact, one uh, from the NYU Law School that really examined the number of fraud cases during the election, it was 35, 35 compared to uh, the accusations of three to five million people. And so um, even though the president has not shown any reason to believe that's true, he's reintroducing this uh, as we get closer to the midterm elections. But he is not the first to do that. In fact, he uh, stole it from a long history of Republicans who made the same claim. But as you mentioned, critics argue that this is just something uh, that uh, that some politicians and lawmakers argue for, but the real goal is to suppress votes and to make it more difficult for certain people uh, to go to the polls and to cast their ballots when it is election day. Uh, but, you know, people who are critics of that and the president say, you know, before you can make these claims, we have to know why. We have to understand why. We need evidence to show that it, not only it's happening, but it's impacting results. And that has not happened. In addition to that, we just heard from the president making that bizarre claim that's simply false, that you need an ID even to buy groceries. And uh, the White House has not yet cleared up why he, he made that, if he meant alcohol products only. So, um, but, you know, we can expect to hear that as he continues to stump for candidates for the midterms. Absolutely. Uh, we the president also addressed criticism that America's farmers are being hit hardest by new tariffs. Let's take a listen. And I want to thank our farmers. Our farmers are true patriots. Because China and others have targeted China had others, remember this, have targeted our farmers. Not good, not nice. And you know what our farmers are saying? It's okay, we can take it. So Ouija, President Trump is considering applying tariffs as high as 25% on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods. That is up from the original 10% proposal. So he's really digging in his heels with the tariffs. What is the White House's strategy here? He sure is. And that set of tariffs is completely separate from the tariffs already in play. A 25 percent on $34 billion of Chinese goods. And plus, later this week or next week, we expect an additional $16 billion. So that's $50 billion right there. This $200 billion figure is something that the administration is still working through and deciding on. And originally, as you mentioned, they proposed 10 percent on those goods. But now they're considering bringing that up even more. And it's to put pressure on Beijing as this trade uh, feud continues and one side has to blink first. Another reason uh, that we've heard is that the yen continues to fall compared to the dollar. And so the percentage has to come up in order to level that out. But there's no official word from the White House yet about whether that will actually be in place. In fact, uh, right now, they're still taking public comments. They have to consider what businesses and people, Americans, have to say about even more tariffs on China, because even though the president, as we just heard, claims that farmers say it's OK and we can take it. I don't know what farmers he's talking to, but we have certainly talked to plenty of farmers in our reporting who say the opposite, that they really hope that a long term deal 
deal can be reached because in the meantime, they are taking the brunt of the financial impact uh, because China purchases so much from them and now they aren't as a result of these tariffs and they're going elsewhere. One farmer put it to me this way that, yeah, we are in favor of remodeling a building and that's what the administration is doing by trying to to level the playing field overall with the trade deficit. But what we worry about is when that building reopens and we are back for business and those tariffs go away, will China come back mm. and be customers again? And so um, even though they do have uh, this $12 billion in aid from the U.S. Department of Agriculture to sort of put a Band-Aid on as they ride this out, as we continue to negotiate with China, you know, their message, their plea to the president is please work something out because what if that money goes away? What if China retaliates again with more tariffs of their own? So there are a lot of questions. And as far as these new set of tariffs, no answers about whether those will be implemented. And, and we just, CBS News has learned Chief of Staff John Kelly is expected to stay in the position through 2020. That would make him one of the longest serving chiefs of staff in recent history. What are you hearing about Kelly's relationship with the president? Well, certainly publicly, uh, the new message is that they're getting along great and that they've committed to working together. In fact, just the other day, President Trump tweeted out a picture of the two men standing together in the White House and smiling and congratulating uh, Kelly on his first official year down in the White House. But we've watched their relationship unfold, and it has been tumultuous. There have been times when Kelly threatened to leave. There have been times when we heard uh, the president was considering who could replace him because he anticipated Kelly to leave as well. And certainly the tension between them is no secret. So I think this is really a play to wipe that away, to, to show uh, that they are united and to, to squash any more rumors and reports that he is leaving uh, because those have surfaced uh, time and time again that this could be the week that uh, General Kelly leaves and that just hasn't happened. And so this is a public display that they're committed to working together. But we know the president changes his mind. Uh, you know, it could be in the matter of a day a, or two days or a week that he can change his mind. But as of right now, I think, you know, they want to present this front and Kelly is on board in saying that, you know, let's cut out the noise. Right. Let's stop the speculation. Let's just focus on the work. 2020 is a ways away. We just hang. Thank you so much. <laughs> sure. Thanks.